covering the All Ireland final. In Croke Patrick or the Miracle Water of Knock. Under Western skies this week, two commodities are invaluable All Ireland tickets, and to a lesser extent, green and red cloth. But if the tickets are scarce, the same can't be said about the songs the good ones, the bad ones, and the downright awful ones. So sit back for a while as we attempt to capture the flavour of Mayo Fever 1989. I mean, we're going to Crow Park, we're not going to win. Big time left County Mayo in the year of 52 and said goodbye to Bender, John and 42. He crossed the Shannon River and left us here to find from 51 to 89, such a long, long time. Where the Moy River's flowing, our hopes and dreams are growing. Sam's coming back to Mayo, back west where he belongs. Sam's coming back to Mayo, back west where he belongs. Had you anticipated there would be this kind of demand, say, as the year was progressing? Well, we, we had, if we go back to 1985, we had an all ticket game then, so we had some experience of getting allocation tickets for something like that. But. Then we had, we had about 30,000 tickets for, we were able to satisfy our demand. Now we've got about 10,000 tickets for 60,000 people, so... I'm sure you've been hearing all sorts of sob stories. What was, say, the most original one you've heard? Well, I had a person on Saturday morning looking for um, any kind of a ticket, so... I said I'd try do my best to get you a Canal Inn ticket, but then he's got a bad back, so he kind of... The stand ticket would be preferable. When Willie Joe was six months old, he was lying in his cot. He took a notion in his head and he began to trot. His mother whispered, hush the door, it's time for a little nap. But Willie Joe took a mighty lap and landed in her lap. Good on you, Mayo, Willie Joe. Good on you, red and green. You're the greatest team in Ireland, the best we've ever seen. Come on, ye men in red and green, you fill our hearts with fire. There's a hundred thousand male men waiting for the Sam McGuire. Well, the news is all about, and the loyal fans all shout, of a team of men that's ready for the fray. All of Mayo is aglow, and our hopes of glory grow, where the red and green that's rally to the call. So come on, Willie Joe, and Bill Callum from Mayo, Dermot Flanagan and Sean Maher and John Finn. Jimmy Brown will light the fire, and we'll take the Sam McGuire. John O'Malley's men are really on the move. The kind of enthusiasm is just unbelievable. Uh, I, I'm finding pretty difficult to come to terms with it. Uh, I mean, in financial terms, we have suddenly shot from a corner shop to a Quinsworth type operation. Uh, at the beginning of this year, we came in with a, a debt of £35,000, and you know, we ran a raffle clear of that. But since then, the sponsorship deals that we've got and people uh, sending money from England, I rang home last night and my wife told me that Eugene Rooney, who was fundraising in uh, New York, I'm selling a fellow called Tommy Highland, who was originally from Kelchimov. They, they, in fact, have raised thirteen and a half thousand dollars, and they hope to make it fifteen by next Saturday when they arrive in Dublin. So, that's the kind of, uh, you know, the response there is. Uh, in Leeds, I know for a fact there are a busload coming, and they have three tickets be between them. And uh, people are saying they're going to Dublin for the crack. If they can't get a ticket, what the hell? They're going to go up to enjoy the atmosphere and hopefully the. Well, definitely the, the aftermatch uh, celebrations. So, you know, those are some of the, the things that are happening. I have this vision of uh, thousands of Mayo men being prepared to pay any price for tickets on Sunday and that they'll be yeah. taken to the cleaners. Could that happen? It's pretty difficult to take a Mayo man to the cleaners, despite all the rumours. We're not the, the you know, the irons we're supposed to be. But you're right, Tommy. There are, as I said, coming from England, there are lots of people, and there are a hell of a lot of wealthy people in England now in the building business and that. And they are quite literally prepared to make any kind of money. Uh, what I'm talking in terms of... There's a guy from uh, McNicholas from Bohola, and he's a big contract in London, McNicholas Engineering, and they're coming home. And he, in fact, has togged out the Mayo team from socks to blazers, as you'll see next Sunday. 
And he's flying in with a party of 15, and he was on to me for tickets. And I told him there was no way he could get 15 tickets. I mean, you know, I get him a couple, and that was it. But he, he's coming, and uh, that's it. And, uh, he's coming over the crack, and they will buy tickets, no doubt about it, in the black market. Whether the black market will get them this year or not is, is, is another story. And then they always seem to do. You must be haunted yourself. You work as a rep, is it, for Boyne Valley Honey? Yes, I'm a sales rep. I sell honey for Boyne Valley in Drogheda, and it is. It's a, I mean, it's a ridiculous situation. I've been in Donegal since yesterday morning, and everywhere I go, you know, my customers are asking me for tickets. But I thought it was brought to a ridiculous situation and on the road between Ballyboff Fay and Letterkenny. On two occasions, I was stopped by squad cars, Mayo guards, who recognised the back of my head and uh, my car and they, they want the tickets, you know, so those are the kind of things that are happening. But people are very understanding. They know the pressure I'm under and all the officers of the county board, and uh, it, it's, it's a way of life now. They're just asking everyone, hoping that, you know, they'll get tickets. But uh, there are no tickets with any of the officers. They've gone to the clubs, and, and that's it. There are going to be a lot of Mayo guards, I think, in Croke Park, or outside it, maybe, or on duty. Yes, on yes, I, I, I'd say they will. And, you know, I, I remember a famous incident in Galway 1-3 in the Trot. I met a very good friend of mine from Kelchima in, in a Garda uniform in the Hogan stand. And he had borrowed his brother's uniform and bluffed his way into the match. So I'm not suggesting for a minute that any of the presence lot would do that. But, you know, those are the kind of things that, that happen when people want to get to a match. Come on, you heroes. Come on, me boys. Rise up, you heroes, as high as the sky. May oh, our magic. We have the speed, Mayo will be champions, we will succeed. Toast to Mayo. Toast to Mayo. We'll bring the sand back. Bring the, bring we'll the see them in the Hogan, the Hogan stand. Yeah, here, here. Here, here. here. Powerful stuff. Way ahead of that <laughs> Murphy's. Way ahead. <laughs> Great county for song, and uh, they may prove that they're the best county for, her, for football tomorrow. We'll find out. We'll have a word from Cork in just a moment. But last Sunday, a huge crowd of 35,000 people turned up at Port Leisha for the under-21 hurling final. There's a report from George Hamilton. All-Ireland weekend in Cork, and the place has gone football daft. Well, almost. The fact that the county footballers are in action tomorrow at Croke Park does not mean that the small ball game is forgotten. But the footballers get a look in here too. And of one thing, there is absolutely no doubt both footballers and hurlers are agreed about the outcome at Croke Park tomorrow. Win because they've got players like John O'Driscoll, Teddy McCarthy, Larry Tompkins, and they've got a wonderful keeper. And may all have just one or two good players. And Cork will be more determined to win it now because they haven't won it, or they've been in the final two years now and they haven't won it yet. So they should win. Their midfield is better and they have more experience of the Croke Park, and their midfield is. Um, a bit stronger than Mayo's, and um, so is their forwards, and their keeper is great. Robert, you're proud of your Cork colours. Why do you think Cork are going to win? Because they're the best team in the country. <laughs> Who's so good in the Cork team? Larry Tompkins. Is he going to be the match winner for Cork? Teddy McCarthy. Teddy McCarthy. Teddy McCarthy. Goal from Dave Barry, maybe? Probably three. Three goals from Dave Barry, that'd be something. And how will you feel if they perish the thought, okay. don't win? Um, I don't know, I'd probably check this oh, this is what all the fuss is about on All-Ireland Weekend, the All-Ireland Football Medal. Now, not too many people in Cork actually possess one of these. The man who looks after the hostelry in which we find ourselves right now would dearly love to have one come Sunday night. That's Larry Tompkins. But I have been joined by three Cork men who do possess an All-Ireland Medal. Jimmy Barry Murphy, John Coleman, and Frank Cogan. Now, Jimmy, 1973, 19 years of age, a marvellous day, two marvellous goals. The world must have been at your feet. Yeah, it was a marvellous day, all right, George. Um, it was one of those days when everything goes right for a player, and uh, I was lucky enough to get the scores uh, that were fairly important on the day. And, uh, you know, a lot of players went into all Ireland finals were unlucky enough not to play well, but that was just one of those days when, as a team, everything went right for us. We got some marvellous scores all over, and uh, it was a marvellous team performance on the day. Young man of 19 with uh, exceedingly short hair, I seem to recall, and a, a football career stretching before you. But I'm sure you thought in 1973 you'd get the chance to play in another All-Ireland. 
I did. I thought we'd be in All Ireland finals every year for a long yeah. time after that, but uh, didn't work out that way. Um, we were in '74. We met a Dublin team who had more appetite for the game on the day than us, and uh, turned out to be a marvelous football side after. But uh, it's a source of great disappointment to all the '73 team of that or players at that time that we didn't uh, win another All Ireland because we think we were a far better team than just one All Ireland proved. You know. And the hurling medal doesn't make up for that. Oh well, it, it, it all helps. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, John Coleman one of the Coleman's of Mill Street and brother Billy famous in international rallying. Centre half back on that day in 1973. I dare say it's like yesterday in your mind. Yes, George. Uh, thankfully, we could remember most of what happened that day. Um, it was a tremendous occasion, as Jimmy said. Um, I feel extremely privileged to have been, to have been around at that point in time uh, with such a great bunch of lads. And, uh, We've kept up our, our comradeship since, and, and uh, it's all very special to us. And uh, I must say that um, I feel that the, the current squad uh, have the same attitude, and I would hope that uh, the same will happen for them. I suppose it would help if they won tomorrow, because it would take a bit of the pressure off you. Everybody would be it's coming. Good, you asked good, about all that. It's good indeed. Everybody uh, reverts back to 73, and before 73, it was the 45 team. But uh, it would be so nice now to, to, to change it about. It's time it... it uh, it changed hands, and uh, this squad have gone through um, two disappointments already, and they really deserve it, third time round. Frank Cogan, you seem pretty relaxed yourself about it all. I am. I think the team are very relaxed at this stage. You know, Dublin was definitely the big pressure game for them.